Hello there, welcome to Wake Up to the Bible. I'm Daniel Kaplan. I'm here with my father, Dr. Kaplan. Together we're going through the books of the law, Genesis through Deuteronomy, over the course of this year. Today we're reading Genesis 32, 14, 30, 14 through 30. I'm going to be reading from the Robert Alter translation, and then uh, we will discuss what we have read. Okay. And he passed that same night there, and he took from what he had in hand a tribute to Esau's brother. 200 she-goats and 200 he-goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milch camels with their young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 she-asses and 10 he-asses. And he put them in the hands of his servants, each herd by itself, and he said to his servants, Pass on before me, and put distance between one herd and the next. And he charged the first one, saying, When Esau my brother meets you and asks you, saying, Whose men are you, and where are you going, and who are these herds before you? You shall say, They are your servant Jacob's, a tribute sent to my lord Esau, and look, he is actually behind us. And he charged the second one as well, and also the third. Indeed, all those who went after their herds saying, In this fashion you shall speak to Esau when you find him, and you shall say, Look, your servant Jacob is actually behind us. For he thought, Let me placate him with the tribute that goes before me, and after I shall look on his face, perhaps he will show me a kindly face. And the tribute passed on before him, and he spent that night in the camp. And he rose on that night, and he took his two wives, and his two slave girls, and his eleven boys, and he crossed over the J Jabbok ford. And he took them, and brought them across the stream, and he brought across all that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the break of dawn. And he saw that he had not won out against him, and he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip socket was wrenched as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for dawn is breaking. And he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Not Jacob shall your name hence be said, but Israel, for you have striven with God and men, and won out. And Jacob asked and said, Tell your name, pray. And he said, Why should you ask my name? And there he blessed him. All right, so... That's the end of that segment. There's a couple different things. We have more set up to build up to Esau. And then, of course, the dramatic uh, angel wrestling situation, which is rather famous. It is interesting, though, because I feel like you often uh, hear that story out of that context. And I don't think it's completely unimportant that it is kind of... It is interesting that that just takes place in the middle of all this other chaos, right? Uh, I think sometimes people forget when that angel wrestling event happened. It happened really kind of in the middle of this cliffhanger. It was like, well, what's Esau going to do next? And then meanwhile, Jacob, you know, goes off and, and this random stranger starts wrestling him and things like that. It's just, it's it's a very interesting timing. So what are some of the things that come to mind? Just a few, right? Well, you know, he... <laughs> Somehow he was left alone. Everybody else got out of there, and he was the last one to leave, which is interesting. It's like the captain, you know, doesn't he's not the first one off the ship. He's the last one off, and he's he's just there long enough for 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 uh, this intervention to occur, and then he uh, he's with this person all night. And I, I believe that uh, there would have been times when when maybe there would have, they would have taken a break, and and there would have been some discussion. I don't think. I think that when it talks about wrestling all night, I have a feeling that that's a, a, a concise account, but that very likely there were breaks in between and discussion in between, uh, interaction between them in that hmm. way. I, I believe that. I would like to read out of Hosea, the 12th uh, chapter, um, uh, verse uh, 3, uh, talking about Jacob. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and in his strength he struggled with God. Yes, he struggled with the angel. You see, this is God as his own messenger. This is the uncreated angel. That's why in my translation of Hosea, the, the angel is capitalized. And in your translation and mine of Genesis 32, man is capitalized there. A man wrestled with him. Mm -hmm. This was the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, I believe, the Logos. So God is literally wrestling with, with Jacob, with the ancestor of, of the Old Testament church. Yes, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought favor from him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spoke to us. 
that is the eternal God of hosts, uh, the eternal is his memorable name. So, you know, Jews like to say Jacob wrestled with, with, with an angel. I believe there's more to it than that. I believe this is a theophany. That he's actually wrestling with God and he's struggling with God. Now, one way you could you could uh, uh, interpret Israel is you take the word Sar, you know, uh, you could say he, he has become a prince with God, but the, the term is normally translated as he struggled with God. I, I have heard about uh, a, a statement that Dennis Prager made. I don't think I heard it myself, but I hear people talk about it. A Muslim woman called him up and said, <laughs> why are you a Muslim? Why are you a Jew rather than a Muslim? I was just reading this in his commentary. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, right? going. <laughs> Islam means submission, <laughs> but Israel, Israel means struggling with God. And that's my, my, my way of life. I struggle with God and you want to be in submission. You know, it's just kind mm -hmm. of interesting. So I'll say more, but I'll let Dan. I'll let <laughs> no, Dan no, no, forward. no, no. There's so much to to bring out. One thing that Robert Alter brought out, which I thought was cool, um, is uh, he he specifically has he touched his hip socket, and he says he says this in his commentary: the inclination of modern translators to render the verb here struck as unwarranted, being influenced either by the context or the cognate noun nega, which means plague or affliction, but the verb naga and the call to conjugation touch. always means to touch to even touch. to barely touch to barely touch right right so it seems like it's some sort of magical touch or if one prefers a skillful pressure on a pressure point which i think is cool because yeah it's definitely something something going on there and of course you know you have to wonder how jacob knew enough to start kind of you know to ask giving and to bless him obviously he had to catch on somehow right and so if you have the idea that this incident that happened where he's being touched if to jacob's mind he didn't really have a normal explanation it seems supernatural yeah. well then that would give you a different sort of insight. yeah I, right that's and i think i think the new king james does uh does say he touched him i uh uh yeah it just says he touched which is mm -hmm. you know it reminds me of a totally different different uh, matter, mm -hmm. but uh, in my younger days, uh, I, I was told by by my rabbi, you know, if if if, if you really need to date girls, because I mean, uh, uh, Orthodox Jews don't really go don't date women until they're ready to marry. Mm -hmm. But you know, this, this rabbi was a little more liberal. He said, well, if you really do need to date girls, you know, it'd be better if you if, if if you can spend every night. In the Beit Hamidrash in the house of study, do it. But if you have to date, go ahead and date. But remember, negia is asur. In other words, touching a woman is forbidden. So the word was negia, is like mm -hmm. what Daniel just said to touch. It's a totally different subject, but I just. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I got you. That rabbi, by the way, was Shlomo Riskin, who's pretty famous. Mm -hmm. That's a long time ago that I was like about 18. Mm -hmm. And I didn't date, by the way, uh, normally. Uh, just one date. And I never had another one until, until I was ready to get married. <clears throat> um, same here. Um, <laughs> the uh, the um, uh, what was it? I was trying to say touched his hip. Oh yes, hip socket. Okay, so that's kind yeah. of an interesting thing too. What it's particularly getting at. Um, when you think of that kind of region, right? That's also where God meddled with Adam, for lack of a better word, to create woman, too. So there's something about that. And also, if you think about the fact that ultimately he's going to say, you know, you're, he's he's reaffirming that, you know, this is the the line, right? This is the, this is the you're, you know, he's going to change him to Israel and everything. You know, it does kind of relate to the groinal region and things like that so it does kind of make sense but then on the other hand it's not just that too it, it's a it's it's uh something that would put you askew and i thought you could get from jacob's name that kind of concept of a, kind of a crookedness right and so it's kind of making him straight i don't know but well there yeah there, well, did 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 uh this is where where did we leave off with with which verse uh we did, left off where he blessed him we didn't get to the peniel stuff oh yeah he said your name is israel yes and uh you've striven with god and men and worn war and, and, and have prevailed out. and that's where it ends yeah okay so maybe we should go ahead unless you have anything more you want to say i wanted to comment mm. on, on 
on the rest of the year. Yeah, well, it's, I guess this comes from Rashi. There were an altar pointed it out where he says, it will no longer be said that the blessings came to you through deviousness. Ah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, but through lordliness, right? That's a very good point. Right. And so, um, and, and the deviousness is kind of a crookedness, right? And so he's kind of like, messed up and then he kind of you know <laughs> so he's kind of showing him that he's crooked by my by, by maiming him right and so that he could straighten him back up it, it seems to be the case he goes from being a heel to uh <laughs> to being a one who struggles with god yes and and man too and prevails you know mm -hmm. so now he prevails but with with you know because of his relationship with god so by going from jacob to israel this was seem to indicate his conversion mm -hmm. at this point and he is he is evidently going to be there in the kingdom of god mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you read it you know, as right. you keep reading in the bible right and it is interesting of course when he says you know what is your name which of course he doesn't right. need to know but i think sometimes you get this throughout where god will ask you to declare something that is true so that he can go further with it but you have to declare that first uh, and that's just a way to have a conversation. It also, honestly, is a way to kind of anthropomorphize yourself, right? In some ways, it's a little bit humbling and to the audience, right? It's putting you kind of on our level. Although it is interesting because he asks him his name and then he gives a very Talmudic sort of answer, I guess. <laughs> like, you know, he's just like, well, why, why, why are you even bothering asking my name? Um, and obviously, there's a lot of people that get super hung up on whether or not you need to worry about a personal name of God. And I would say that my, well, and we'll get to that as we go through different books and Exodus and things like that. But, you know, it, it, I think it, obviously people get super hung up on the idea that you can distill God into a concept that's a single placeholder name. And I think that's very contrary to the Bible that continually gives him different titles. And I think at this point, he's kind of, calling that into question a little bit himself it's like why should you even ask which implies that a single distilled name in my opinion it doesn't i i think that's that's a pretty good refute for that idea because if his name was so important why would he even question why he's asking i guess you could say well didn't he already know the name and he's just asking for reaffirmation but then that would defeat what some people say about exodus which is that that's the first time you ever heard the name which i don't agree with but yeah, no, but you know what I mean? That is a common that is a common belief, right? And so Cecil B. DeMille popularized that. <laughs> that has, was not the originating has, He who has no name. We as, don't even as, know his as, name. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, that but that's become part of pop culture. Yeah. I think he saw too many what was it, the masked the masked hero? <laughs> what is that guy? The Lone Ranger? Who was that masked man? It's like who was that who was that weird guy? <laughs> like we don't know. <laughs> it's a mysterious thing but no i think but i think it is interesting right if it really is so important that we know his personal name then why would he ever when somebody asks him his name be like well, why are you even asking that question well this way this this is why we know that when when uh, the logos came to earth he had to come as a jew because when you ask him a question he answers with a question <laughs> i mean seriously <laughs> but i do the same thing all the time so <laughs> sometimes honestly though that is the question right it's not even the answer it's why the person's asking it in the first place because ultimately because because jacob is saying tell me your name and and god is responding um you know who i am don't you you yeah, know right? right haven't you figured this out yeah, right. um, <laughs> i suspect that he looked a little different than an average man well i'm so assuming he maybe must be a glow or something you know on the other hand too i wonder because this is the third time that jacob has seen something right yeah, that's, that's a, a that's point. so the question is is did this look like the other two did it look a little bit different was it nighttime so it was harder to tell like is it different you know well if he, circumstance if that would be one reason why he says you don't have to ask yeah you know? and before people get like hot and bothered about that um jesus was mistaken for a gardener so yes people can in <laughs> fact with experience apparently not recognize god so um you know just in case you're you're, you're you think that's heretical or something um anyway any other comments about this well if we keep reading we'll see very clearly that, that he did believe he was facing God, mm -hmm. you know, cause after Daniel reads the next section, it's pretty clear. <laughs> and with that said, <laughs> a little teaser for tomorrow, um, please like, subscribe, hit the bell.
Uh, comment below, you know, we had some hot takes today, so if you have any <laughs> comments, feel free to comment below, and uh, we will see you tomorrow.